Hey everybody, I'm Yasin. I'm part of the team at Diode. So we are going to do a video on Diode. I'm going to teach you how to get your Raspberry Pi connected to Diode's peer-to-peer -peer network. And we'll be using a Mac computer here. So let's just go ahead and let's take a look at this. You're going to go to Diode's GitHub page. I'll put all the links in the description. It's github.com slash diode chain slash dial underscore go underscore client and this is going to install the dial go client so you'll need to have the go programming language installed on your computer so clone the dial go client from github Go to dial.io slash testnets. This is our testnet website. Go to fleet registration. Go ahead and register your fleet contract. And let's check the Go version very quickly here. So the version we're using this video is 1.13. It will be best to use the newer versions of Go. Our engineer, Peter, is doing all the work for us in this video. So to run the dial Go client, use the command make build. Go ahead and execute the Go client program. Copy the fleet contract address, then enter dash fleet. So dash fleet, what it does is it assigns the fleet contract address. And here we got the client address 0x5ce and so on. So copy this client address and paste it here. So what we are trying to do is to add our device to the whitelist, right? So click whitelist here. Confirm the MetaMask transaction and it takes about 15 seconds. It says true when it is done. This little spinner here, we have to wait for a little bit, about 40 seconds, for a new block to be added to the dial chain. What goes behind is the block quick algorithm doing its work. So for now, it takes about 40 seconds for block quick to finalize a block. How do we know if the device has been added to the whitelist? One way to check is to notice whether you have any error messages. If you still see messages like, device was not whitelisted. It means it has not been properly set up yet. If you stop seeing these kind of error messages, it means you are all set. There is a star sock server, 127.0.0.1, port 1080. Now that we have the client successfully connected to the diode network, we can see our fleet contract 0xb86 and so on is now connected to the asia.testnet.dial.io, right? So you can type help to get a list of all the environment variables. You can choose your own node, or if you leave this off, then your default node will be used one out of the three four nodes, the US, Europe, and Asia, based on your geographic location. And since Peter and I are currently located in Taipei, it will, by default, choose the four node operating in Asia. Here comes an important step to follow. So what we want to do is we want to set up our Firefox proxy setting under the About Preferences. Type About Column Preferences. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Go to Network Settings. Go to Settings. Configure Proxy Access to the Internet. Automatic Proxy Configuration URL. There is a proxy pack file from our project's GitHub repository. It is used to set up Firefox proxy. So it allows you to redirect the matching URLs to a local proxy server. For Peter, his proxy pack file path is this, right? So let's go ahead and update this information in this field and then click reload, then OK. Back to our terminal, so sshpy. Now we want to find out the current local IP of our Raspberry Pi. Um, how do we do that? So one way to do it is we can use the terminal command if config. This command is used for displaying current network configuration information. So at the terminal prompt, type if config pipe grab 172 and then press enter. Now that we know the local server IP, Let's go back to our browser to see what our Raspberry Pi's website looks like. We're trying to get the Pi address, so search client address 0x7809 and so on. 
So that's the pi address. So now that we have set up everything, we uh, want to use proxy server to connect to the pi address. So go back to our Firefox browser, enter rw-0x78, the uh, pi address, paste the client address here, then dot styled. Let's take a look at the video streaming. So type the pi address, then port 3030, then start. That's the view from our office window. And now we can use we can also use dial.link here. So instead of connecting through a local server, we can connect through a remote server that's been set up in Europe. So type https column dot double slash rw dash and so on the dial dot link. So here Peter is waving his hands. He's trying to show that it's a real life streaming, not some random image. In this video, we talked about how to use dial to go client to a live video streaming. Go check out our GitHub repository, try it out and let us know how it goes. Share this video with your friends, tell people all about it. We look forward to seeing issues and pull requests. And another thing that's very, very exciting for us, we will be doing a workshop for the first time. So this year at ECC Paris, one of the biggest Ethereum conferences in Europe, CTO Dominic Lads will be doing a hands-on workshop on how to bring our machines and Raspberry Pis online, as well as explore how their communications will look like in the world of Web 3.0. So come say hi to us if you're around.